In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, Father, we give thanks to you for another day that we can be alive. Amen. That we can come into your house, O oh Lord, and hear your word. Amen. Help us, O oh Heavenly Father, that me, we might be the people that you have called us to be for the sake of this world. Amen. Good morning. All right. We got people in the pews. Look at that. Thanks be to God. I guess y'all come to see if I cancel again, huh? <laughs> mercy, Lord, mercy. But you know, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Yes, indeed, because I look at the pericope, the, 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 the lessons assigned for today, and read this one from Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. And pensively, I thought a lot about us and what it is saying. And so I'm going to go through the epistle for today. So you will need your Bibles. You will need your Bibles because I have a couple other passages to point you to. And I don't want you to get lost on this fantastic voyage. P-Funk. Come along and ride. And so, you know, this passage is talking about people saying, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, right? And so we know Paul, right? We know Paul. Paul is the, the author of the Pauline epistles. Paul has many books in the New Testament, right? Many letters written to the various churches in the New Testament. We know Paul as he was on that Damascus road and he got smacked by the light of the Lord and, and converted. We know Paul, that vile man who had been killing Christians at whim that was finally brought to the light of Christ and became one of the biggest advocates for the gospel? We know Paul. But who in the world is Apollos? And so if we don't know Apollos, we may just end up glossing over that I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, and it don't really mean much to us. But if you look at Acts 18, Acts 18, that's right after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts 18, verses 22 through the end. You will find who is Apollos. Apollos was a Jew from Egypt. Yes, there were Jews that lived outside of Israel. Apollos was a Jew from Egypt, and the word says that he was an eloquent man. He was a gifted orator. He was a good speaker, a good preacher. And he was mighty in the scripture. He knew the word. He was, as we would say, he, he was a good preacher that knew the word. Amen. And apparently Apollos had also ministered to the Corinthians. And Paul ministered there. And then comes Apollos. And Apollos preached. It's kind of like if you had a guest preacher come in. And you got these traveling preachers come around. And Apollos came in. And he was preaching. And everybody was up in an uproar because of what he had said. And it was good. And so there started to become divisions in the Corinthian church. Where there were some who liked what Paul had to say, there were some who liked what Apollos had to say, and they became divided along those lines. I am of Paul, I am of Apollos. And so, in good ancient Christian fashion, those who are of Paul wrote to Paul asking him to settle their dispute. I imagine that they probably wrote to Paul looking for Paul to jump up and beat his chest and say, I am the one that you should be listening to. That way, when they got the letter back, they could go to the other ones who are of Apollos and say, see, we got a letter from Paul saying that he is the true apostle that you're supposed to listen to. That's, that's probably what they were looking for. But he goes a different way. And he answers their, their questions 
like this. He says to them, what are these contentions? I am of Paul. I am of Apollos. Is Christ divided? Was Paul, was I, Paul, crucified for your sake? And so he goes forward and he says basically that salvation does not come from either Paul or Apollos. Salvation comes from Jesus Christ. And verse 17 makes it clear, crystal clear, if it wasn't clear before, that if anything divides us, the cross of Christ is made of no effect. If anything divides us, Christ was crucified in vain. And so if I were to title today's message, I would say, Shall we re-crucify Christ? Shall we re-crucify Christ? You see, H. Richard Niebuhr, a theologian who Dr. King loved, said in one of his books, The Social Sources of Denominationalism, I don't even really need to get into the book for you to understand just by the title what that means. The social sources of denominationalism. And the basic premise is that denominationalisms, or as my, my old school Rastafarian would like to say, demonationalism, demonationalism, denominationalism comes about because of social factors. Right? So if we look back at Christian history, we will see social factors as the reason for all of the various demon nations that we have in the church. It is as if, remember when Rodney King got beat over the head and he, he asked, can't we all just get along? No. I can answer that for him. No, we can't because of social matters, because of social concerns, because of petty disagreements. And so we divide. And we divide along denominational lines. And so if we look back at the American church and we see there were those who were for slavery, there were those who were against slavery, and the two couldn't meet, and so they divided. We'll be remembering Absalom Jones in a minute, and, and because we remember Absalom Jones, we know that there were those of us who were able to worship down in the pews, and there were those of us who had to worship in the rafters, and so we divide. We have those of us who believe in a quote-unquote social gospel, that the gospel should have effect on the lives of others, and we have those of us who say that it's just about your personal relationship, and we can't come together, and so we divide, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if dividing along denominational lines was not enough, we got more division in store for you. Because even within demon nations, we divide. We can't decide on who should marry whom, and so we divide. Over in the global African and the global Anglican communion, we cannot decide how many people you should be able to marry, and so we divide. We cannot agree on who we should ordain, whether women should be ordained or not, and so we divide. And you know, if you thought the reign of divisions was over, I got news for you. Because even within dioceses, we divide. 
And so just at diocesan convention yesterday, we're talking about whether or not we should give money to the national church or abstain from giving money to the national church. And so we have reason to divide. But wait, we can take this division even further and go down one more level. Because even within parishes, we find ways to divide. You heard it. We may or may not have said it here. I don't know. Y'all don't talk to me about them things. But you know, he or she ain't my pastor. That ain't my priest. I don't know who chose him or her, but it wasn't me. I didn't have a part in that. I remember when. And so we divide. Rather than maintaining the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, we divide. Like that child on the playground, we take our ball and go home. We go over to the other place and we form our own court and we make up new rules on who can play and who can't play. And we create this place where only those who look like us or think like us can come and play ball with us. Shall we recrucify Christ? Where is our allegiance? Is it with the Paul or the Apollos in our midst? For us specifically, St. John the Baptist, where is our allegiance? Is it with Father Pender? Is it with Father Nimhart? Is it with Father Meadows? Is it with Father Ballantine? Like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians 3, who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one? I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Neither of us was crucified for you. And I know from first-hand experience with Father Pender that he went through a lot for you. But he was not crucified for you. Neither of us was crucified for you. Only Jesus Christ was. And so our allegiance is with him who died on the cross, not with the various personages who may come before us. Shall we re-crucify Christ? Shall we make his cross of no effect because of our human allegiances? Now, I can't speak for the others because I don't know them. But I can speak for Father Pender because that's my dear big brother and I know him. And I can say... And Father, jump up and say anathema if I'm wrong. But I can say he did not want you to follow him except that it led you to Jesus Christ. And I say that my hope is the same. And even if you do not know that yet, Trust God who sent me and not me. 
shall we re-crucify Christ? Beloved, let us not divide in our allegiances. Let us not be of Paul or of Apollos. Let us all be of Christ and let all of us be of Christ. Let us all be of Christ as a collective and let all of us as an individual be of Christ. And may the power of his cross keep us united in him who alone can save us. Amen. Jobbread.com is home to the online ministry of Father Jobbread. Journey with us through the wilderness to God's promised land. Subscribe now to Jobbread TV and receive all of his videos.